Hello, this is the supervisor, Mike Sikorsky, for Zowie Estimation at the elementary level. I'm going to be going through this step-by-step uh, -step on uh, the different stations that you would child or student would go to as they come into the room at Zowie Estimation. This is a bucket which would hold a dry substance and it would occur a, uh, a cup would be given to each team with their team number on it and they're going to be asked to grab 100 grams of this dry substance, whatever it might be. It could be nuts and bolts, peas, uh, lima beans, paper clips, pennies, nickels, dimes, something would be in here that they have to give 100 grams for in a cup that could be any size, usually a plastic solo cup, anywhere from 8 to 24 ounces. So they won't know until they get there. Right, that's correct. Uh, at station one, they have the students have about maybe one to two minutes to decide amongst themselves, and you may decide that there's one student out of your two that does that best, and I mean you'd have that person do it. Or you may have them decide to both give it a, a go and just, uh, hold it in their hands and, and try to get, see what they think, and then have them both agree. That'll be up to you to decide how to how to work that. Station number two has two containers that has uh, have a different number of objects inside of them. Uh, this is one possibility, and you can see that one side is a little bit covered. The top would be uh, see-through for sure, and then there'll be at least two, two or three sides that they can look at. Now the best way to do this is to have the students learn how to count the surface area. This container may be full uh, with up to here or to there, or it could be filled to the top. I have any choice I want, but they're going to try and count the surface, and then they're going to count on the sides how many layers they think they see, and multiply. Uh, there also may be a rectangular shaped uh, container that could be used. Any container I use would be the same for all the teams and they'll be able to see the top and they'll be able to count how many layers they think they see and multiply. Can they bring something to measure with to do the calculations? Uh, they'll have a calculator there for my post station, stations two and three, so they need to bring nothing with them. Uh, the pencils, uh, I'll be providing pencils and calculators and so they won't be requiring anything at all. In fact, they're only supposed to use when they go to station three, which is the different size boxes, and they have to measure using the, the lines on their hands or something you've uh, worked on with them. They cannot have any marks on their fingers or hands, like, mark, like ink marks or pencil marks. They try to use, you also may not use a pencil of any kind other than the ones I've given you. And you can't use that pencil or this calculator to measure the boxes. Okay? It has to be just their natural occurring wrinkles on their ha fingers and hand. They have to measure the length, the width, and the height. And of course, multiply that together to get the cubic number of centimeters for the box. The calculator we'll be using is a TI-108 from Texas Instruments, and you can see how that looks right there. So if you wish to have them to use the same calculator, it's not necessary to do that, but if you wish to, then this is the one you should be using, because that's what we'll be using at the Olympiad. We give some uh, helpful hints for coaches on each of the three stations. Uh, at the first station, when you're supposed to grab 100 grams of the dry substance, it'd be good to grab 100 grams of paper clips, 100 grams of pennies, 100 grams of uh, maybe styrofoam balls, and have them see the difference between size and that it takes up in a Ziploc bag. Have them carry that around. Uh, have 100 grams of M&Ms, 100 grams of peas, dry beans of different kinds, things like that. That would help them on station one. Uh, also, maybe try to practice it with a plastic cup so they can see the difference between what the volume of the cup is filled with, depending on uh, how much uh, substance is inside, it still is 100 grams. On station number two, you want to use different size containers and fill them up halfway full, only one third way. Uh, different uh, objects in there, of course, as well. Either like gumballs, which would be easy, and then uh, maybe a smaller container, but you could have a rice in there even, which might be close to the limit of 5,000. Station number three, you're going to pra practice with different size boxes, anywhere from uh, the smallest, maybe a, like a pencil box, to a little bit larger than this would be the maximum. And of course, practice uh, practice with a certain part of their finger, either each other, any finger or thumb that works for them, that has a pretty close, uh, either like one, two, or three centimeters in width, so they can use different, have different markings, uh, naturally occurring only on their fingers to be able to measure the boxes. And then, of course, teach them the length, width, and height, length, times width, times height uh, formula. I'm now going to speak about the answer sheet. When students walk into the competition room, they're going to be given a sheet of paper that has some numbers and places with numbers on. Uh, they have their name, both their names, if there's two of them, uh, their, score, their team name, and their team number. And uh, then they'll hand that, keep that with them as long as they walk through the rest of the competition. After they've given the cup back to us with their team number on it, that has a number of 100 grams, what they believe to be 100 grams of the dry substance, they're going to take that sheet of paper with them to the station number two where they're going to have the containers filled with objects they have to try and estimate. They're going to write those answers down. 
and they're going to also go to station three with the two boxes, estimate those, write those answers down. And they're going to, before they walk out of the room, they have to give us the answer sheet, of course, so that we can calculate, to calculate their score. Yeah, I'm not going to talk about the scoring for Zoe estimation. There are five scores possible, and of course, if you have a perfect score on each one of 100 points, it will give you a perfect score of 500. So they have to get as close as they can to 100 grams of the dry substance. And if they have a 95, then they get 95 points. If they have 105 grams in there, they'd also get a score of 95, subtracting five from the, the perfect score. On station number two, you know, the two containers with objects inside of them, you're going to uh, take the number of, let's suppose we had 3,000 objects inside of here, tiny styrofoam balls, for example, then they would, let's say they uh, had uh, a guess of 2,000, you take 2,000 divided by 3,000, get that answer, multiply by 100, and you get their score. In this case, it would be about 67, 66.6. On station number three, there'll be two boxes, and again, they're going to give the actual they, the example they've given us, they're going to give the estimate, we're going to divide it by the actual number of the uh, container, or box in this case, and we're going to divide that again, and then we're going to get a score uh, somewhere between 0 and 100, and multiply that by 100 and get a score. So we have a percentage, and if you uh, look at the calculator when you do this, you might see that if you have a, a score or an estimate that is above the actual amount, I suppose that was supposed to be uh, 1,000 this 1,000 cubic centimeters, and they guessed 1,500, you would divide 1,000 by 1,500 and you could get a, a number that would be a problem. You'd say, okay, now you have to subtract 2, and when you subtract 2, you get a negative number. You would forget the negative number and then, then multiply that by 100, and you're going to get a score for that as well. It'll be accurate to two decimal places.